Hey, last week I ran a two-hour webinar on landscape editing in Capture One, and today I would like to share several tricks from this webinar. You will learn why it's important to crop an image before adjusting the auto levels, such as in this image where a slight change in composition can drastically affect the result of auto levels. Just check out the before after and the difference is so huge. You will also learn when it makes sense to use the linear response curve, like here, where the linear response curve can produce softer and more detailed shadows, like on this image. This was the first of three classic Capture One webinars that I'm running. The focus is on classic Capture One tools, not AI-powered ones. We will discuss image tone and color grading techniques, as well as various workflow tricks. Today I will host the second webinar in the series, and it's all about event photography. We will talk about how to edit business events, festival, and concerts effectively and efficiently. You can get access to all free webinars and their recordings with a $40 discount. Just go to alexandra.com slash webinars and enter this code LIFE40 at checkout to get $40 off immediately. This code is only valid for the next 24 hours. See you at the webinar. Let's start with discussing the correct order of how tools in Capture One should be applied. And if you think that it's not a really important question, so let's use any tools in any order, I can give you a very simple example of why it is really important. So let's take this image. And I'm going to use auto levels on this image. So I'm as you can see, the result is actually really bad. So we still have almost no black information on our histogram, uh, despite the fact that we just applied auto levels. And you might have a question why this has happened. So let me show you what I was hitting. <laughs> like, I mean, literally, it's like it was hidden behind my uh, avatar. So. As you can see on this image, we have this little area. And this little area, it affects our levels correction just drastically, like preventing it to set the correct black and white point. Just to show you how it works, let's uh, crop out this area. And ta da! So now we have absolutely amazing levels corrections. And so in single click, we performed a really nice editing, but all, the, all this was impossible if we would not crop this image in the first place. So just keep in mind that it's really important to perform uh, such uh, operations as cropping in the beginning, because it can affect all your further editing. It's uh, just crucial to keep in mind because uh, you might just lose access to such a such a fantastic uh, tools as auto levels, for instance. But what about the, let's say, curve? How to decide? Do we need curve correction or not? I mean curve, I mean base curve, not the uh, the curve tool, which is a more advanced tool that should be used like on the, on, the, on the next steps of image editing. So let's take this image. And as you can see here, we have um, in general pretty balanced image, except the fact that uh, we have little bright information on the histogram. So just adjusting levels, automatically should fix this image pretty nicely. But you might notice that the image is a bit 
is a bit overly contrast now that's not a problem because like for such a plot uh high contrast is absolutely fine and and it works well here but let's create a clone of this image and i'm going to reset the uh, levels now and first i'm going to set linear response tool and we're going to discuss this tool a bit later in, 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 in uh, some practical examples. But let's just switch to this linear response tool. And I'm going to auto adjust levels as well. And let's compare. So as you can see, we have pretty similar images, but the level of contrast and the details, I think are way more interesting. So the color is mostly this, the same well considering the fact that well high contrast always affects um, uh, color as well so it's a bit different but i think for such an image such mild and soft shadows work better well it's just my perception of this shot i like this a bit uh, a bit dreamy look uh, a, bit, a bit foggy look so I think it's kind of like works really nice, really nicely here. So it depends. It depends on your vision of your future editing. So for instance, if you would like to go with such a high contrast, go with it. It's perfectly fine. And just leave the auto curve. And this is it. You don't need to do anything else. But if you feel that you would like to have a bit more soft, a bit more um, a bit more mild editing um, and less contrast in your image then it makes sense to set the linear response curve and continue your editing with this curve because uh, this will result in maybe better image for your task but again it's not some 100% rule or something. No, it's uh, only a matter of your task and what the look you're pursuing in your editing. Now, regarding the linear response, why we might need it. So for instance, let's clone this image. And here I'm going to set auto. So I'm going to set here linear response. And that's perfectly fine that like the image is so dull now. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase exposure and auto adjust levels, maybe not so drastically, something like this. And at the same time, I'm going to recover shadows a bit. So something like this. Let me see. Yeah. And as you can see, we now oh, we now have a really nice dynamic range here. So we have pretty bright areas, pretty dark but detailed areas, and altogether that forms a really beautiful dynamic range on our landscape. And uh, for instance, here, let's apply basically the same adjustments. Um, so I'm also going to adjust levels and recover some blacks. And as you can see, it looks good. So it's kind of like it's not bad, but it's a bit more, it has more contrast. And that's why like this image looks more natural. So the transitions of uh, brightness contrast and image tones in this image are more natural and form more um, wide dynamic range in general. And I think it works just great for images like these. But again, it's totally up to you. So I'm not forcing you to use linear response uh, curve. Moreover, well, to be honest, I, I don't use it for every image. I use it only for images like these. So images that will benefit from such a Mm, a bit different, a bit unique approach. And for instance, like here, so as well, uh, as, well as with the, the previous image, switching to 
the linear response curve might benefit this image but again we need to adjust the levels a bit and maybe exposure well it's better to ex adjust exposure first and then adjust levels because uh, otherwise you would need to readjust auto levels after this so let's compare it with the default option so as you can see we we now have pretty similar images but somehow this one with a linear curve well just has more life in it. it it looks a bit like film right so see like here here I, I immediately can spot the digital look here but here no I like this I like these shadows I like the the dynamic range of this shot now so that's 100% digital look and this one no I would think I'm not sure it looks about it looks like film really nice so in such cases uh, using the linear response curve might be really really beneficial for your images if you enjoyed these tricks you can access all the classic capture one webinars for 40 dollars less just enter code live 40 at checkout and keep in mind that this offer ends tomorrow